Yeah. Okay, Wait. now we're recording. Now we're recording, yes. Okay, excellent. So I've been, Lucas, I've been dying, dying to talk to you about this movie. What movie did you watch, Lucas? I watched Everything, Everywhere, All at Once. And what did you think of it? Uh, it, man, so, like, I'm always wary about movies that get hype, right? Like, I mean, I mean, you've experienced this in your own, you know, like, with, uh, you know, you saw Fury Road after everyone said it was amazing. and it Oh, yeah, I went to go it. see it on my birthday. That was my, yeah. I, I, almost every year I go to the movies on my birthday. I just love going to the movies. And Fury Road was my pick that year for my birthday movie. And I'm sorry to everyone listening. I don't like Fury Road. I am like the one person in the world. Oh, actually, my partner doesn't like either. Her and I are like the only two people it feels like in the world that thought Fury Road was completely. I think uh, I think Rath James White didn't like it either. Oh, that's right. That's um, right. He didn't like it either. Because yeah. I was because he made a post about it and everyone was like, oh, my God, Rath, how could you not? And I'm like, there's another one. There's two of us, <laughs> Rath. I didn't like it either. Yeah. And so, um, but my, my, you know, my reason for being wary of movies with hype was, uh, you know, I grew up, um, a star Wars fan and I, I, I guess I was 15 when the Phantom Menace came out and ooh, every, ooh, ooh. we were all ready for that movie. And, oh, I saw, yeah. I went to go see Phantom Menace and the thing, yeah. and I remember even being like, this isn't good. No, like, <laughs> I found out very quickly. I was like, oh, this is really no good. And I knew I didn't think this movie was going to be bad. I, I, I knew it was going to be good, but I did not think it was going to be as good as it was. Like, I just it absolutely blew me away. Like um, uh, a little like peek behind the curtain. I judge horror movies and other movies differently like i just think of them as different art forms yeah 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 Um, so do i i i like yeah i've even some years done like when i've done lists of my favorite movies i've done like a top 10 horror and the top 10 everything else yeah (laughs) yeah exactly um and so but uh i mean that being said i I would say like this is like this has to be like the best non-horror movie i've seen in a very fucking long time I've seen people arguing online. I shouldn't say arguing. I've seen people like stating online on like social media, people calling it like the best movie they've ever seen in their lives. And I don't know if I'd go that far, but I can actually understand directly why somebody would walk out of the theaters and be like, that was the best movie I've ever seen in my life. It's far and away one of the most unique movies I've ever seen. It is. Um, I will. I have no shame in saying this. Last when I saw this movie in theaters, last third of the movie I fucking wept through. Oh god! I just could the last not believe. Third? I mean, <laughs> I could not believe how strong that movie, like how how hard that movie hit me, and especially its its philosophy, its messages of it's its, it's all a elaborate metaphor about ending generational trauma. Yes. Yes. Because it's about the trauma that's passed on through generations and through a family and how you accidentally keep perpetuating like negativity mm. yes. and just a movie being conscientiously about that and about trying to break it and choosing like, oh, man, so this movie's almost like making me choke up just talking about it. choosing yeah. to be better despite what happens in the world like yeah it's oh stubbornly positive yeah. in the face of apparent meaninglessness uh, you know uh, and that's what i really fucked with about it because there are moments in that movie where i was like fuck man this just because it's an a24 movie and like i i just like you know everything's grim dark now uh i was like She's going to actually have to kill her daughter. That's what's going to happen in this movie, isn't it? (laughs) It, And and it turns into like the solution to survive, to survive this battle, to survive this problem. It's just to choose not to participate. Yes. Yes. And that's where it got me of like, it reminded me like everything everywhere all at once may be like the closest thing we get to an actual 
Grant Morrison as a patient in terms of actually having the spirit of Grant Morrison. Yeah, you said that early on, um, and I totally get that. Um, I don't know that much about him. I, you know, I've obviously read The Invisibles and See, oh, I've read some of his specific, Batman work. It's specifically The Invisibles I'm thinking of. Specifically yeah. The Invisibles, because remember the whole key point in The Invisibles towards the end is choosing not to participate in the war. And then yes. discovering that there's actually no sides in the war, and that's how the war ends. Is that lay down your arms? Yeah, yeah. Just don't participate. And no. I thought this movie essentially was doing the same thing with you know, like the multi-universe invasion, and that the solution, the way to beat it, is just stop fighting, just stop participating in the battle. Yeah, I yeah, totally. Uh, it's it gets so much right that and i and i and i was a matrix fan growing up but i i feel like it gets so much right that that movie maybe got i'm not going to say wrong but it definitely it definitely takes an approach that as i am an older person like maybe vibe with a little more you know i never thought about comparing it to the matrix but i a hundred percent see where your mind's connecting the two right like a hundred percent see that She's the one. She needs to yeah. learn how to fight. And then she's like, well, what if we just don't? And, and it's, yeah, whereas in The Matrix, it's like, okay, what if we got really big guns? <laughs> really big guns and shoot all the cops, which I know you love. But yeah, I, 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 I mean, I'm not going to complain about that part. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I am a leftover crack fan. I'm not going to complain about that. <laughs> thank God we're paywall on this. Yeah. Um, <laughs> this is where you can speak a little freer. Uh, yeah. um. but no but you're right because like because then the, the uh matrix it's kind of like the same you're right it does have a little bit of the same basic plot to it whereas the matrix then decides like oh yeah wouldn't it be cool if we could shoot it all whereas yeah. this movie is like how about we sit down and have a conversation about why we're doing this yeah here's why i'm feeling what i'm feeling um you know or or why i why i've lived my life this way you know instead of yeah instead of just trying to burn it all down um oh man it's some of those man i can't believe like how much that movie like fucking got me over ridiculous shit a movie where two rocks are having a oh subtitle God, conversation was oh fucking God. emotionally wrecking me incredible incredible and like when the the it was like when the rock, when the the rock that represents her daughter was like falling off the cliff, like I was yeah. like, no, no, like just <laughs> really like losing it. You know? It's so <laughs> dumb, and it just my God, was it just a hit so like hard. And the um the Ratatouille parody with the oh, rac- so good. Ra- raccoon, so good. it was a raccoon, right? Yeah. And when yeah, the animal because, be- when the animal control gets him, like I was staring, I like I was crying at oh that. Oh my god! Like, yeah, because he's like really, yeah, because his, you know, his raccoon buddy's getting carried away. And, uh, I oh, I love that. I love that. Um, dude, how? I mean, I feel like I I want to highlight Jamie Lee Curtis's performance, but I also oh. feel like. Everybody was really good in this movie. Oh, this is definitely one of those movies where, like, every single actor is just, just phenomenal in their roles. Because also, everybody was playing, like, three, four different characters. Yes. <laughs> yes. Because <laughs> every universe's version of them is different and does yeah. different things. Jamie Lee Curtis, oh, my God, like, the hot dog finger. Oh, my God. <laughs> which is so stupid. And once again, like, the, some of those scenes, the hot dog fingers were, like, fucking breaking me over yes yes because they were just like i don't know like it's like i mean you talk about like or i talked about like the the stubborn positivity and it's like so they live in this universe where they're hot dog fingers so they can't play piano oh yes they can they're gonna play piano with their toes because they're just stubbornly want to like <laughs> yeah. do the thing that pleases them and i i just oh and i, and I, I think that. like what really the whole movie is about that I'd argue, um, well, I mean, I argue it's about like generational trauma and that, but in how it approaches things, it's probably like the most nihilistic movie I've ever seen. But it's nihilism in terms of the battle between like 
nothing fucking matters as a negative statement and nothing fucking matters as an empowering statement. Now and, that treads more into like not to be this guy, but like that that then treads more into like existentialism, right? Where it's like Yeah, yeah. Where it's like, okay, like nothing matters except what you what we you, what you choose what, to yeah. have value in. Yeah. Yeah. And that's what I thought was like the battle like the thematic battle in the movie. And I guess it's better to say like um nihilism and existentialism. Yeah. Is the, the thematic battle in it and definitely oh my god i just i i was just absolutely floored at a movie doing something like that and it being in such a digestible way as well dude that's the thing like for being such a dense film like it moves at a crazy pace it's it's over two hours long it's Keep over that two mind. hours long and it does not feel like it at all it does not drag for a fucking second. The, like, oh, it is just rapid fire, but not exhausting rapid fire either. Like, I know some people have leveled that criticism at specifically, specifically, like, I think uh, some of the Zack Snyder DC movies. Like, oh, like I can see that. Yeah, like, they're like, yes, it's action sequence after action sequence, but I'm exhausted. Like, you know, and, and I don't. Like specifically the early, I think specifically Man of Steel, I think is the one that I, I I'd heard well, that I, level I that. I can very much because Man of Steel yeah. is essentially like. Have you seen Man of Steel? No, no, it's no. It's essentially it, like two movies, and it feels like you watched two movies by oh, the end of yeah. it. It is yeah. it is an exhausting movie just because it's it's very long and there's a lot. Whereas mm -hmm. this does have a lot, but it's actually all very focused. Yeah, it's like, incredibly focused, and di I think you already said digestible, and that's, like, probably the, like, yeah, I, I, I that's probably the word I've been looking for, because I, I did mention it, I, like, in, I talked about it in my newsletter briefly, uh, although in, like... I, I read your of, newsletter just because I wanted to see what you, what you said about this movie, I'm like, Lucas didn't write much about it. <laughs> no, because like, I wanted to, yeah, I wanted to save it for this, um, yeah. you know, uh, but it, um... Yeah, no, uh, what I what I had said was that it's really dense, but it moves at this breakneck pace. But I think the word I was looking for was like, it, you know, it's like all these big ideas, but in a very digestible, digestible was the word you used that I really liked. And that, man, like when she uh, when the mom character, the first time she put the googly eye on her forehead and also I'm wearing like a hat oh, right now. I, saw, I, saw. I, have, I actually have like a third eye hat. It's designed by uh, the street artist uh, Woke. Woke Face is the name of the <laughs> artist that the, I I really like Woke Face's work. I've been yeah, to some of their cool. I've been definitely. to some of their art openings in uh in Portland and they've done a few art shows here. Yeah. Um but man, like when she puts like that that googly eye into the third eye spot and I was just like, Oh my god, this movie's actually going there. Like it, is, it, it knows is. what it's fucking doing and it's like, all right, yeah, we're gonna get weird and abstract and as existential and Almost like a little bit like a culty, but in a very, I don't mean Absurd like, no, like, and... like, like worshiping Satan type of occultism, but actual oh, okay. like but... Es esoteric. Uh, yes, yes, yes. Beliefs. That's it's the the old spiritual but not religious kind of thing. Yeah, you know? yeah. <laughs> um, no, I like that because like the googly eyes were almost like this thing that like she had kind of. Um, been annoyed by right like it was her yes. husband would put them on the bags as like this kind of um you know way to amuse himself and she would always be like you know super buttoned down you know serious at work um yeah no but uh, yeah so this was like kind of her like embracing that kind of silliness i guess that, that's that's like embracing like the as existentialism like you're yes. right nothing matters which means i can do anything yeah so this was, um, yeah, it's, so these, the Daniels, the, the two, uh, folks who wrote and directed it, yeah. uh, what else have they Yeah, they did anything? Swiss Army Man. Oh, okay. That's this is actually. The same, this is the makes, same guys that did Swiss Army Man, which I, I really like Swiss Army Man. I, I, I had an issue though with Swiss Army Man. I really liked it until the ending. Okay. I, I yeah. did not like the end of Swiss Army Man because it refuses to commit to mm. it refuses to commit at the end because, that, yeah but whereas it, 
this, this holy shit in. did they commit yeah yeah it's like they yeah i mean i don't know if you if you made that statement publicly or if a lot of people made that statement i mean it's like they maybe <laughs> like took the feedback oh um, my god i had no idea they actually have done a bunch of work with adult swim as well that also kind of makes that, sense that, that totally tracks i had no idea until just right now but they've worked on several adult swim shows yeah they worked on they worked on Children's Hospital. They also worked on NTSF SUV, which is a very under, underrated show. <laughs> and they also did an episode of uh, Infomercials, which is the uh, short film, uh, which is what Adult Swim calls its one-off short films. They call them infomercials. Okay. And now so, the um. Oh, and so I'm like, oh wow, that also makes like total sense. Yeah. Now the uh the the it was also produced by the Russo brothers who if I if I recall correctly they're like Marvel guys right they're the Marvel guys okay. they're the guys that did the uh, Captain America movies and the the Infinity War and the Endgame. Infinity War and Endgame yeah that's right that's right like they're the um yeah they're the Marvel guys it's I don't know it's like. I don't know, it, it, like them uh, being involved in this movie, it was al- it's almost like them uh, being like, yes, Martin Scorsese, we know how to do cinema. Well. <laughs> like, <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, I mean, this is kind of like the exact opposite of... Um, they'll, they'll, it also, like, it goes... It has it, that, it, too, it's, though. The like, jumping universes, it's filled with crazy action sequences, but it yeah, just has... I, mean, a, I keep bringing it up a lot, like that line in fucking Video Joe, it has a philosophy, and that's what makes it dangerous. Like, right, this movie right. is, like, this movie doesn't just have philosoph- have a philosophy. This movie is just a philosophical statement. It is, it is. And, yeah, it's so much more than just, like, you know how, like, a movie will have a theme, but this is like, I don't know. I felt like there were multiple themes going on. Oh, there's movie. so many. Cause we also have, um, we have like, uh, the daughter character is queer and is dealing yep. with how, how that works with an older, um, older generations. Um, there's also the experience of like Asian dealing. Americans immigrating yeah. to the United States is also, a theme of it uh, um, feeling like, like you've kind of landed in a life that you didn't initially set out for you know yeah yeah, yeah like this, like, this as it sounded like being being middle-aged and stuck where you didn't see yourself ending exactly up, yeah it is like oh my god like, like there's so much so much really actually like heavy shit it's this movie is so talking about oh man yeah. like that line like I, I'm, I'm going to paraphrase it here, but it, like, oh, this was another one moment that like broke me. Like in another life, I would have been happy just doing laundry and taxes with you. Yeah. Beautiful. Oh, beautiful. God. Like, um, I've got, I, why in everything bagel? I've got a, a like, what do, what do you think that, that is, <laughs> that's about? Oh, oh, I, 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 I don't know. I think it was just like a joke. Like, got away from them in a glorious way over yeah. like how do I mean, you represent how, yeah how do you represent everything we have a bagel that has everything on it because an it. everything bagel is already a concept it's a thing like yeah like I don't, I'm, I'm not a bagel guy so i don't really know what goes on in everything bagel but i do know that that is a hundred percent a thing Yes. And I wonder if they just, I wonder if they really like bagels or something. And Maybe. I think they, I think one of them came up with the joke and they both uh, just kind of like ran, just ran with it, ran with it. Oh my gosh. Oh, and also, you know, uh, the directors, they also did the little John video turned down for what? Oh, no shit. Which if you've never seen that video, the music video for Turn Down for What is fucking amazing. And it's essentially cool. a dry run for everything, everywhere, all at once in terms of its visual makeup. Oh, I'll have to check that out then. Oh, it's, totally... a, it's a cool music video. Yeah, for some reason, my partner has been playing that song a lot lately. I think it has something to do with something happening at our work. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, 
Yeah, like like she's specifically playing it in like uh, work meetings. Um, oh, yeah, that's that's bizarre. It's very, very bizarre. I don't understand it. Um, but uh, yeah, I'm trying to look. I feel like this cast, like I, I've seen a lot of these people in other things. Like, I mean, I know Michelle Yeoh. She was a Bond girl. She was like in a bunch of stuff with Jackie Chan as well. Um, and then. Um, well, you know the uh, the actor that plays her husband is Short Round from, from Indiana uh, Jones and yes, the Temple I, of Doom. Yes, I did know that. I did know that. Um, and then, and of course, there's Jamie Lee Curtis, which is like, right. Uh, she's amazing. Uh, James Hong, the grandfather. I what know. What do I've, I know him from? Like, oh I've my seen god. Him. Like, oh wow. Oh, oh wow. Like yeah. everything. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Big Tro- oh yeah. Big Trouble in Little China is what I know him for mainly. Yeah. But he was also in Blade Runner. Oh, he was, did they make him like older in Big Trouble in Little China? Yeah. Okay, that makes yeah. sense. Okay, so he played exactly who I think he played. All right. He, um, he's he's yeah. His filmography is crazy long. Massive. Oh my god. <laughs> oh, he played a. Nin- he was in Ninja Three: The Domination, that movie where that guy gets like shot and takes forever to die have you seen that clip i don't, I don't think i've clip. oh amazingly such... i don't know what you're talking about i really don't i'm like huh oh i've got to show you that it's actually really funny <laughs> i mean it's really just um i'm looking i'm scrolling through here it's really for the most part just real b movies that he's mm-hmm. that he's in and like lots of stuff that be for lack of a better term is like stereotypical for a uh actor of Asian descent to play. So like, you know, lots of bit roles and things related to martial arts, which mm-hmm. I think is also something that this movie was directly commenting on oh, uh, was the role of Asian Americans in the film industry and what type of roles that they're actually given and offered. Like um, the, the guy that plays the husband, what's, uh, what's his name? Uh, um, um, he, he Ki Hu Kwan, and he also okay. goes by Jonathan. Um, uh, and this he, is yeah, okay. He, he I've actually seen him um in like he's Vietnamese uh, background. I've seen him specifically talk about that he never tried to get out of acting. It was just um he couldn't get acting roles as oh, as as an Asian man that yeah. Hollywood is really limiting about the types of roles that they will give Asian men. And, um, and that that's like why he kind of disappeared and kind of came back with this movie. And as he says about that, he uh, never wanted to stop working in film. He just couldn't get jobs anymore in film. But, uh, man, like, I mean, I, I'm sure this movie's, I don't know if it's going to sweep the Oscars, but I think it's going to like, <laughs> do very well i wasn't sure if i if i was if like myself and like everybody that i listen to about movies was just on off in our own little bubble but they're starting to do like the various industry awards and shit that obviously all builds up to the oscars uh this Mm -hmm. is sweeping fucking everything that's awesome it's winning like the few awards the few awards groups that have already done it like it's winning best actor it's winning best (laughs) actress it's winning uh best director it's winning best film it's like it's sweeping everything and i'm like oh i i could actually see this sweeping sweeping the oscars and that would be i mean this though is the movie i am rooting for uh, I know people were like, like, oh, the Oscars, it doesn't matter. Of course it doesn't matter. That's the whole point of this movie. <laughs> it's yeah, nothing matters. Yeah. But it's it's a industry award. I find it int- – I follow the film industry, and so I find it interesting to see what people who work in the industry consider to be the great works or the great right. performances of the year. Man, I am – I am rooting for this movie. I like. Mm-hmm. I'm. I, w- I want to see it take. I oh, I totally take everything. <laughs> I totally forgot that the. Uh, I guess the uh, the universe where like the uh, the resistance is based is called the Alpha Verse. 
Oh and yeah, like, yeah, because they're cause the it, ones who are ready to fight. Like, and I was no, like, because they're called the Alphaverse because of the first ones to make contact with another universe. Oh, okay, all right, but I still think there's a double thing there. It's like, yeah. oh, we're alphas, like we're <laughs> fighting, well, you know. They're, they're also like, the ones that then start fighting back. Yes, yes. Oh. Oh man. But yeah, I'm really um. Like, I think the last time I actually had, like, a movie I was, like, super rooting for at the Oscars was uh, uh, The Shape of Water, which I love. Yeah. The Shape of Water. And before somebody's like, oh, it's a movie about the woman that fucks a fish, she's also a fish. Yeah. I can't believe how many people, seriously, how many people miss, you've seen The Shape of Water, right? I I have not, but uh, oh, yeah, I know. The Shape of Water is incredible, and I also actually just did a gigantic spoiler. That's okay. That's okay. I kind of figured. I mean, that she's I don't know. actually the female of the species. And yeah, I mean, they, they never come look, outright and say it on screen that she's not human. She's also a fish creature, but because they didn't say those words, so many people, so many people, went completely over their heads that she's not human right right but it's like yeah no i mean they have to have that twist in there because people don't <laughs> wouldn't you know it people have a problem with bestiality um you know i'm yeah, yeah. i'm uh i'm, well, I'm people ghost- are like isn't that movie all about bestiality and like no no she's the other of the species it's yeah. about it's about the last two of the, the male and female the last two of their species finding each other like it's <laughs> It's a fairy tale romance, and it's beautiful, and it's about fish monster people. Like, yeah, no, totally. <laughs> it's, I don't know. I'm, I, I don't want to do all this too much, but I'm, I am, I am ghost writing one of those werewolf sex books, and uh, <laughs> uh, because because people have a problem with bestiality, you actually uh, like the specific guidelines are like. In the sex scenes, they both have to be in their human form. Like you can't. Oh have. my god, that's funny. Oh my. Yeah. God. Oh my god, that's so funny. I never, I, I never thought about that. But I'm like, I don't know. I think there's a lot of chicks out there that probably like the idea of you know getting ravaged by a wolf man. I, yeah, I bet you that's yeah. not that unpopular of a of a concept. Probably not. Probably not. <laughs> um. Yeah, sometimes right. it's distracting me now. <laughs> Sorry, I began totally, thinking totally. about werewolf sex, and I'm like, what were we talking about? Oh, yeah, everything, everywhere, yeah. at once, sweeping the Oscars, and somehow we got the werewolf sex. Actually, yeah, it's yeah. a very firm point of how we got there, but, yeah. And there was also <laughs> that was also the same year that um, uh, Get, Out Get Out also yeah. won a bunch of – so it was like Get Out and Shape of Water were sweeping the awards, and it was like fucking A genre films Finally. fucking like, took over that year. And, and that was that was what we thought we wanted, and then uh, now we get Ari Aster movies all the time. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh. <laughs> you know what? I think you actually should talk him more than I do. I probably do. I probably do. <laughs> you're you're um, just like he he annoys me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's just the easy. T- he's an easy target. Like if I like look like I actually like if I were to like pick like an a24 movie that i absolutely loathe it would probably be something like it comes at night um but nobody remembers that movie because it was dog shit <laughs> oh my god yeah boy that movie has been like completely forgotten about it feels already yeah, yeah. um so if i so like I, I i usually pick his name out of a hat because he's the most recognizable practitioner of that style i guess did you ever see his short film, The Strange Thing About the Johnsons? Mm-mm. It's about a family in which the son is sexually abusing the father. Whoa. See, now that's interesting. <laughs> it is. It is something else. Um. I actually think it's pretty good. I actually think it's pretty good. The um, how he came about doing the film. It's actually um, a film he made while in college, and he and the people that he came up came up with the movie with, um, uh, were trying to think of what's like the most shocking, offensive thing they could make a movie about that they haven't seen done before. 
and that's there a pretty <laughs> shocking, offensive thing. Oh my gosh. Oh, wow. So, everything everywhere all at once. <laughs> yes, back to that. Back to that. Yeah. Um, we, uh, got, we got, we got like, sidetracked. Out. Also, yeah, the performances in the mo- movie, like, everyone fucking deserves awards, I feel, that, like, was in this. Like, they're so fucking good. Yeah. Um, gosh, I, Jamie Lee was like almost unrecognizable. Like, you know, like I was like, I was like, I was watching it with my partner. I was like, is that, that's Jamie Lee, isn't it? And she's like, no, like, she's not that like old. And I was like, first of all, yes, she is. (laughs) Yes, she is. um, But I do, I do recognize that in Halloween ends, which just came out, she, like she's old, but she let's just say age is a little more graceful <laughs> than the character depicted in this movie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She, they they make her look very very different. Yeah, just she. I oh. I don't know, like the way she like she she looks like how you would met like who you would picture if somebody was like an IRS auditor. Oh yeah. <laughs> I, I want I want to go back to the everything bagel here because I'm looking at the Wikipedia page for this movie. Yeah. Um. Um, here, I'm just going to read straight from the Wikipedia page. According to Quan, who's one of the directors, the idea of the everything bagel, quote, started as a throwaway joke. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, Shiner, is, and then that's the other, that's the other of the team, uh, noted that they spent time attempting to develop the religion of bagel followers, but encountered complications. Um, uh, J- uh, Jobo is a nihilist. Should they be a dogma? Should it be a book? Which should they practice as be as a religion? The bagel stuck be- because it became such a useful, simple symbol that we could mm. p- point to as filmmakers. And you don't have to explain it much beyond the joke. Well, and yeah, and you also like think about like you know um, this movie being about like you know there's all this shit going on and it's like you choose to engage with the things you want to engage with you know whereas like a bagel with everything on it like that's just it's just too many fucking toppings man you know this is interesting um so the directors began researching the concept of the multiverse as early as 2010 after being exposed to the concept of model realism in the documentary sherman's march which i just looked up what it is and it's the idea of um any possible world that can be envisioned already exists that like in terms of other universes everything every single variation does exist. Yeah. Um, but this is where it gets really interesting. Quan described the release of the animated film Spider Man into the Spider Verse, which also deals with a multiverse concept as a little quote, a little upsetting because we were like, oh shit, everyone's gonna beat us to this thing we're working on. He also stated, quote, watching the second season of Rick and Morty was really painful. They've already done all the ideas we thought were original. It was really frustrating, so I stopped watching Rick and Morty while we were writing this project. <laughs> <laughs> that's hilarious well, but you I know could, i mean to that point though like i mean i get what yeah. they're saying but also none of those works honestly really commit as much as this does to that like concept well of, it's just it's just down to like you know like like okay like the like the the spider-verse people and rick and morty like they 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 they, they tackled this concept but you didn't tackle this concept yet. Ah, and, there we and go. And so, yeah. like, what's your take on this concept, right? Like, I mean, Jeff, like, you and I could could each be, like, prompted to write a love story set on the Titanic. And, and do something completely... Completely different. different stories. Like, you know, it's just... And it would be different from Cameron's movie as well. Like, um, so, yeah. No, I'm glad that they didn't... Throw in the towel after they saw Spider Verse. As much as I love Spider Verse. Oh, I loved Into Into the Spider Verse. I thought that was phenomenal. You argue that that's like top three superhero movies, right? Uh, I put it up there. I yeah. say it's the absolute best Spider Man movie, and oh, like for, nothing, nothing comes close to. Oh, I am Spider- so excited I, I mean, for the second one. Actually, I one. think all of my favorite 
all my favorite superhero movies actually I think are animated. I'd probably put Spider Man into the Spider Verse. Um, um, uh, fuck, oh, what's All Star Superman? I'm like, I can't believe like space on the name of it, which oh, is actually all those, based, which is actually based fucking, on a Grant uh, Morrison comic. Yeah, all those uh, DC animated movies are fucking bangers. And, and I think all I think All Star Superman's the best of them. Yeah, which yeah. also is which, a little bit about like time traveling. Um, universe stuff it's also and, one of the best comics ever too like yeah oh my god that comic is what the, the is best, the best superman story i'm sorry what does superman do when he finds out he's finds gonna out die. he's gonna die like oh yeah wow. so for anyone that's listening that's unfamiliar with what all-star superman is about it's about lex Luthor has succeeded he has poisoned superman superman will die there is no way around it by the end of the story superman will be dead so what does Superman do knowing that he has a finite time left to live? And it's about what Superman chooses to do and what he chooses to leave as his legacy. And it's phenomenal. Powerful. It's so powerful. Lex Luthor at the end. Oh, oh, oh yeah. my God. Oh this my God. I don't, like, I'm yeah. actually, I actually don't want to spoil the ending for anyone that hasn't seen yeah, it. Yeah, you actually shouldn't. Yeah. But the ending once again, everything everywhere all at once reminds me a lot of Grant Morrison's work where mm. like when you get to the final conflict, what if you just choose not to participate? Yep. And and then also, you know, also I throw up there for amazing um, uh, superhero movies. Um, I am not joking whatsoever. Uh, it's actually my favorite Batman movie, Lego Batman. Oh, dude, it's great because it's just, first of all, like... <laughs> Will Arnett as Batman is hilarious. It's so good. Um, it's and then so good. Also, like, the movie is, it's really just a love story between Batman and the Joker. Which yes! I, yeah. Which, uh, which again, is something that Grant Morrison explored. Did he not? Like, am I yeah, misremembering this? Did. Okay, yeah. Yeah, 100% did. Um, and, in fact, um, originally in Arkham Asylum, the Joker was supposed to, uh, uh, I'm not sure it would be like the the Joker was supposed to be wearing female clothing originally, uh, like oh, femme wow. clothing in Arkham Asylum and trying to seduce Batman. And, oh, no shit. And DC told him, like, you can't do that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but if you read Arkham Asylum with the context that the Joker is also trying to seduce Batman, you can 100% read that in that text and you know you wouldn't you would not be making up in your head that's actually part of grant moore yeah um but yeah no uh i I think that lego batman is just like a phenomenal love letter to the batman franchise and i'm a i'm a big batman fan and also like i died when it was like when the I guess the computer asks him for the password or something he's just like iron man sucks oh yeah (laughs) And also, one thing I love, every Batman thing ever is in continuity to Lego Batman. Yes. Everything. Which is also a thing Grant Morrison did, right? Like, yes. Yeah. Yes, yes. That's also, a th- that's also this thing straight up from Grant Morrison. Um, did, did you ever read Grant Morrison's epic run on the action so ship? I have Batman not comic? read the entire run. I have read specific pieces of it. But, like, you said it's like, what, like... So he takes everything, but is like, not only is everything canon, the uh, time period is canon too. So it's like, yes, all of this happened in three years, five years, five, five years. years or whatever. Because yeah, in yeah, Batman yeah. canon, Batman became uh, Batman when he was 27. In the current DC universe, he's 32, which means five years have passed. So okay. Grant Morrison's concept was, what if every single Batman story ever happened over the course of five years what would that mentally do to somebody what would that physically do to somebody like he hasn't slept in five years he hasn't gotten laid in five years except the one time when he got raped by talia a ghoul that's the only oh, time yeah, that's right and, and that becomes very important in it like his yeah. only sexual relationship was him actually being a victim of rape um Damn. in five years and it's just like like what what would this mentally do to somebody? Obviously, it would destroy them. But Batman's Batman, so he has a plan for his own brain being destroyed. Because 
Batman has a plan for everything. Of course he does. I, I actually I actually have a bit of a fan theory that Batman does have a superpower. Oh, I am very if you, curious. Have you never heard my fan theory on Batman? I have not heard this at all. He's incapable of losing. That's a superpower. Mm. Yeah. Is now is that like a superpower or is that like a pathology kind of thing? <laughs> no, no, no. Because we our um, superpowers pathology pathological. I'm I'm going about this about like you know like you know in the like the the universe of the DC DC universe. Um, okay. Like no matter what, Batman has never lost. He can take out um he can take out Darkseid. He can take out Superman. He can take out all these people. Oh, because even yeah, because even when he got like broken by Bane, like he like tagged in. Jean Paul Valley and like and he came back in what a year or whatever and like even that yeah. felt with, like the plan, you know? Yeah, like with with Az- Azriel. Um, Azriel, yeah, Jean Paul Valley is his yeah. name. And then yeah. Batman comes back and kicks Azriel's ass because it's like you didn't do it right. Yeah, you you killed somebody. I told yeah. you not to do that. <laughs> but um do you know like in uh Marvel Comics is character Domino? That's a mutant, and their mutant power is luck. That luck oh. always works out in their favor. That their mutant power is they're abnormally, unnaturally lucky. I'd argue it's Batman's superpower that he can't lose is something like that. That no matter what happens, reality will work out that Batman wins. And that's I mean, actually what his superpower is. I mean, even – yeah, because even if you, like, use, like, some of the, the Frank Miller stuff as canon, like, it's like he even whoops Superman's ass at one point, you know? He's whooped Superman's ass several times. Oh, really? Yes. <laughs> there is absolutely no reason for that. Um, like, Batman's taken down the Flash, who's low-key, like, the most powerful character in the DC universe. Batman's yeah. taken him down. Like, like honestly – if you're not a comics nerd, you don't realize that Superman actually isn't the top of the food chain. There is a lot right. of people that are more powerful than Superman. And Batman's taking them all down. Yeah. Like, there's – Batman's just supposedly, supposedly just a guy that happens to be rich. Like – Yeah. And, like, nah, I'm sorry. After, like, the third time you take down Superman and the fifth time you've humiliated the Flash, you he – Batman fucking shot Darkseid in the face with a magic reality bending bullet. Um, wow. This is also from Grant Morrison's run. <laughs> and, of like, course. Like, 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 like Batman's killed gods. There's no reasoning. There's no reason that any of this should be able to happen. Yet it does. That's why I'm like, now Batman does have a superpower. It's he can't lose. That's actually a really cool take. And that's I, my take, I am, yeah. I am a Batman fan. I clearly have not read nearly as much as, as you have, but uh, <laughs> I feel like I should now. I, I, I go through like a comic phase every every couple of years and I'll yeah, like, same with me. try to read as much as I can during those phases. Um, I still have a Doomsday Clock up on the uh, oh, I TBR. Still need, I still need to read that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, oh, um, before we get uh, – because we're getting really off track. I, before we get too way far away – uh, yeah. Everything, everywhere, all at once. I have one more thing from the Wikipedia that I want to read out. Yeah. And, um, in early drafts of the screenplay, the directors planned for the main character to have undiagnosed attention deficit hyperactivity disorder, ADHD. This. Through his research for the project, Quan learned that he himself had undiagnosed ADHD. Yeah. Yeah, which I, also I, I is found a little that bit out about myself a year and a half ago. <laughs> which oh, I, I I'm I'm diagnosed. I, I'm officially yeah. diagnosed with adult yeah, ADHD. Yeah, I, I was officially diagnosed a year and a half ago, but yeah, it never never occurred to me until then. <laughs> Though I find it interesting of like the director working on this for in the movie, and then it turning out that actually affects them in real life. You know, yeah. breaking breaking that fourth wall there into a way into the actual reality, which is also a little bit of what this. The movie talks about with things yeah. about breaking down reality, like God, that almost seems like they started living in their art in in some aspect. <laughs> it can happen. It can happen, which you know can be a horrifying concept if you're a horror writer. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, uh, 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 Grant Morrison. Was, I'm not going to stop talking about Grant Morrison. Grant Morrison talks about that he, um, uh, the Invisibles, which is a yeah. massive sigil. It's a massive magical spell. And for anyone listening to this, that's uh, not an exaggeration. Grant Morrison himself, in real life, is a chaos magician, and all of his works are spells, magical spells, according right. to him. And he wrote himself into the Invisibles, and he started writing bad things happening to the character that represented him, and then bad things started happening to him in real life. Yeah. And so then he had to write things that only essentially good things happened to his character because Grant Morrison was actually worried about harming his own life by what he did to the fictional portrayal of himself. And some of you may be like, like listening to like, boy, that sounds like he's insane. And I'm like, yeah, he's kind of insane, but he's also a creative genius. Like it's like, if you like, if you like Alexandra Hodorowsky and you're not reading Grant Morrison, you're fucking Fucking missing out. (laughs) And also if you read Grant Morrison and you don't watch Alexandra Hodorowsky, you, you need to like, he's, the film Grant Morrison. Yes. Yeah. Holy yeah. Mountain, El Topo. Like, just, uh, oh, just remind people who Hula Risky is. And, oh man, no, this movie, this movie just, it, it, it floored me how good it was. Um, it, it's yeah. probably the best movie I've seen in many years. Uh, the last time I was this impressed with a movie when watching it, when it, like, initially came out was probably green room um, oh, wow. which green room i place in my top five films of my top five personal favorite movies of all time uh green room is up there for me it's a good one it's a good one um and this this honestly this i'd really have to sit down and think about it but this might be in my top 10 i think i might yeah. be able to already say this is in my top 10 all-time favorite movies yeah, it's definitely up there for me. Like I, uh, I can't remember the last time I was this floored by a movie that didn't involve horror of yeah. some kind. Like, yeah, I, I remember I said I saw um, people post on like social media that this was like the greatest movie they've seen in their lives, and I'm like, after seeing when I saw it in the theaters afterwards, I was like, I know why people are saying that. Like, yeah, I don't know if I go that far, but I kind of 100 percent understand why people were walking out of the theaters being like that's the best thing i've ever seen oh god especially i I don't know what's so infuriatingly good about it is that it's like it's this heavy and all uh, it's as heavy as it is um but it does still operate in a very commercial framework and it Uh, like and not in an annoying way like it's not like you know like it like i don't know like it's very clearly a movie that has mainstream appeal like you know like i was you know i was like low-key wondering when i was gonna watch it until my partner was like i want to watch that movie you know and like and and like and then like you hear that it might sweep the oscars and you you know Mm -hmm. it's just I don't know. It's just super cool. Like seeing this movie, like, like working the system and still giving the stuff that weirdos like you and I like. It's in many ways, like a, um, a really heavy philosophical art film about the discussion of the meaning of life, essentially the meaning of life. And then done it, – it's an art film about the discussion of the meaning of life done in a big-budget action context, yeah. Yeah. which is insane that they actually, like, pulled that off. And it's also very funny as oh, well. Oh, oh, it's very funny. Yes, I I found – my God, there was points that, like, I was, like, laughing through literal tears because yep. there'd be something be breaking my heart happening, just emotionally crushing me. And then there's this weird little throwaway thing that happens that just makes me laugh. And I'm like, literally like cry laughing. Yeah. Um, yeah. I'm not laughing so hard. I'm crying. I mean, I'm crying and I'm laughing like, literally both. at the same time. Like uh-huh. how the fuck is this movie doing this? Like Amazing. they figured out almost like the hack code for like human emotions. <laughs> be all like in this movie. It's like, Jesus Christ, how the fuck did you do that? 
Dude, for real. For real. And, like, I can relate so hard to, like, every character. And none of these yeah. characters are anything like me whatsoever. And I relate so hard to them. Like, Same. I, I, I can just feel what they're going through every step. Yeah. Have you read this uh, Sylvester and the Magic Pebble children's book that uh, no, apparently inspired no. the, uh, the scene where they're rocks? No, I've never even heard of it. Yeah, um, from 1969. Yeah, no, never even heard of that. Yeah, me neither. So oh, I just pull up a picture of it. Yeah, I've definitely never even seen it. Huh. But no, that 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 rock scene was just like beautiful. Like that thematically worked so well because it's more like let's take a moment to pause in all this chaos. Let's take. There a are literally to pause. rocks in a universe where, uh, and, and it's a universe where life never developed. Exactly. Which yeah. Which is just wonderful. And so that, and that's where they're having to pause it's, at in all the chaos to get yeah. out of, to get out of, away from everything. It's the most interesting way you can show meditation in a movie. Yes. Yeah. You're right. You're right. Yeah. Oh my god. Oh my god. It's just so. So cool. So good. Uh, here, here. Oh, I love this. This is a quote from. Um, Oh, oh, this is a quote from the director. Um, Kwan said the everything ba- bagel concept, uh, quote, did two things. It allows us to talk about nihilism without being too eye rolly. And it creates a MacGuffin, a doomsday device. And the first half of the movie, people think the bagel is here to destroy the world. And the second half, you realize it's a depressed person trying to destroy themselves. Yep. It takes everything about action movies and turns it into something more personal. Yeah. Oh, I mean, that's exactly, yeah, that's exactly what the movie is, is it's, about, it's also about like depression, mental illness, like mm-hmm. Jesus Christ, they just jam so, so much into it. And I, I really think it's almost underrated over, it feels so big, but if you actually pay attention, almost all the scenes of the movie are only happening in a couple locations. Like each universe essentially oh, has yeah. one location and it's right. just that they draw it out and explore it so much that it almost creates the illusion that the movie's bouncing all over the world. And like most of the movie takes place in a fucking IRS office. That's true. That's true. Like, like this insane philosophical action film spends the vast majority of its runtime in an IRS office. I love it. It's unreal. Yeah, it, it, it's completely, yeah, un, I love that, unreal. It's completely unreal what they were able to accomplish with this. Um, like, you know, little hint, uh, we're going to be finishing up this year starting next year with our doing an episode of our top 10 favorite movies of the year. Uh, this is my number one. And I honestly don't see yeah. any way that I'm going to see another movie <laughs> In the next couple of weeks, that's yeah, like better than I, this. I, just I know, I just cannot see it. I know I'm gonna watch Smile and Pearl. I'm, I'm fairly confident I'm gonna like those movies, but I don't think they're gonna dethrone this one. <laughs> and my favorite movie, actually, for a while there, uh, my favorite movie of the year was The Sadness, and yeah. I was like, man, I just don't see a movie being more than my personal taste coming out this year, other than The Sadness. It's probably gonna be my number one. And then it was like Sadness came out in uh, like the early spring, I believe it was. I think it was around mm-hmm. March or something. The Sadness came out, and yeah. then and then in the summer this came out, and I just I walked out of the theater being like, "That's the best movie I'm going to see this year." Like, I, there's oh. like no way I'm going to see anything better than this. Yeah, I couldn't. Yeah, I can't imagine anything dethroning this. For I mean this year and for a while like I don't I don't know don't, yeah exactly like this is this like, bad, like this might be like my movie of the decade they, like, they don't they don't like, make them like this anymore <laughs> I mean, no but no they never did this is <laughs> that's the other like this is completely original filmmaking be it how the story's told be it the perspectives it's told from um what it's actually about yeah I, I, it, this is completely original filmmaking. It's not that they don't make movies like this. No one makes movies like this. Right. And then this happened. And wow. <laughs> Wonderful. All right. Do you have anything else to add about about no. it? Or, or just like 
fawning over. I know, I know. It's just, yeah, it's crazy to gush over a movie, but it's, yeah. Um, I would, I, man, maybe I'll look this up for our uh, favorite movies of 2022 episode. I'd actually be really curious to read bad reviews of this. And I don't mean from stupid people online that just to not yeah, understand no, no, no. It. like actual but i'm critics. sure there's got to be bad critics that gave it a bad review just because that happens to everything and then be really fascinating because like in my opinion it's as close as you can get to a flawless movie like i, yeah. I cannot think of a single thing i would want to change about it well because there's something in it for everyone right like it's even even if like you don't really vibe with the philosophical underpinnings of it it's still just an entertaining movie yeah, it's just fun. That's the other thing. Yeah, it's super fun. And it's got a really good heart to it. Yeah. Like I said, even if you don't get the philosophical stuff, it's still just like a joy to watch and it makes you feel good. Right, right. Like it's – it's like a – it somehow manages to be a family drama, an action movie, a comedy <laughs> Um, and like a sci-fi thriller or whatever you want to say. <laughs> and a, a rumination on philosophical concepts. Yeah. And, and, a, and a philosophical co- and a conversation about philosophy and the meaning of life. Like um, I saw not that long ago uh, my dinner with Andre. I don't know if I know I talked to you about, but I don't know if I've talked about it at all on anything we actually oh, recorded. I can't remember if we were I, I had never seen a uh, classic art house mo- movie from the uh, 80s. Um, when, when, when is that? Uh, 1981, yes. And a uh, very good movie. It's literally just two characters having a dinner, and the movie actually happens in real time. Mm-hmm. And it's about these two old friends meeting back up and that they were both young artists, and they've gone in different directions in life. And one of them happens to be in town, and so they meet up for dinner, and it's just them having a a discussion about where their lives have gone and what how they're finding meaning in their lives. And it's a very good movie. Um, it's very much an art house movie. It's very much a film nerd movie. Like I'd have a hard time recommending it to. Right. Uh, anybody because it's very much an experimental film and the experiment isn't like doing like some sort of crazy film techniques the experiment is how do you make a two hour long movie that's just two old friends having conversation over dinner engaging that's right literally that's actually how the movie started it started as a stage play with the um two actors both the actors that are in the movie actually um, in real life, they came up with this concept of uh, the experiment was first, how could they do a stage play that's just two people having dinner and have it be engaging? And then um, then the movie is then an extension of that experiment. Uh, very interesting, uh, really well done, but it's it's very ex- – it's – it's not something you can just recommend to somebody um, unless they're a special type of person, you know, like us to be like, mm-hmm. oh, you want to sit down for your movie night? Uh, right. with Andre is not really what a lot of people would want to watch. I can recommend, though, everything everywhere all at once. And weirdly enough, even though my dinner with Andre is two hours of people having the philosophical discussion back and forth, I think everything everywhere all at once did the philosophical conversation better with metaphysical everything in the in reality bagels and magic like multi-dimension breaking butt plugs and hot dog oh, fingers. yeah that's right <laughs> yeah hot dog finger and like a raccoon that's a chef like it really did it all bad I, I don't think i've ever oh actually that, sure if that, i've that, ever seen philosophy discussed this well in the movie you before. remind you reminded me of a thing though um in the version so you saw it in the theaters i saw Correct. it on uh showtime streaming um did the was there blur blurs over the the butt stuff yes Okay. Yes, that was in the All theaters right. as well. I yes. wasn't sure if that was just like a Showtime thing. No, um, that that was in the theaters as well. Yeah, yeah. Oh God. Um. Also, the fake out ending an hour and a half into the movie. Oh yeah. Yeah. 
<laughs> yeah, I don't remember what it was, but I do remember there being a point where I was like, I was like, I thought this movie was two hours. Like, <laughs> I, I, doesn't it do something with the um the daughter as the villain character winning, and then it goes to the oh yeah yeah yeah. Credit. Am I remembering that correctly? Oh yeah, that's right. Cause the oh yeah, cause there's the. Uh, because the, there's the credits, and the, but it's they're watching a movie. Yes. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's right. I don't remember what happens. Before yeah, that's that right. Because oh, that's right. Um, I know what it is. I remember now. I remember now is that um, the the mother character, the main character, is um, kind of giving in to losing herself in the That's other right. realities where she's more successful and she's abandoning her home reality. And then she also starts becoming cruel in those other yeah, realities. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And she be, hang on, it's all about that, that theme of cooperation and trauma and how we inflict pain on each other and that's actually how the dollar was trying to win was essentially having like like give in to your dark side you know like yes. a little star wars a little bit there yeah. like yes. give in, yeah <laughs> use give in. your anger and that's and that's what it's playing with and then that she has to like come back mm-hmm. from that mm-hmm. oh man oh, yeah. so good so good so good oh and, and right. like the whole the whole goal of everything. Remember the villains, the daughter, quote unquote villain, which mm-hmm. is, by the end of the movie, it's hard to say anybody's a good guy or a bad guy by the end of right. the movie. It's everyone's just people. The goal is just for everything to die, just so it can all end. Just like yeah, it, ah, like, like bleak nihilism on display there. Yeah, it's crazy. Okay. Uh, I, I I'm not sure if I have anything else I can say about it. I think it yeah. Without I think having to do like research there. and that, we'll, we'll be talking about it more also in our uh, best of the year episode. Oh, I'm sure. I'm sure. All right, cool. So I will I'll stop recording and then we will. Uh, dive. How, how far? How long did we, we go? We did an that? hour on. Uh, okay. On yeah. I, I don't re- I don't really have anything. This this was not an interesting week for me um, in watching stuff. So. All right. Yeah. Yeah. yeah me neither. Um, I, I, yeah, no, yeah, not really. Um, and then, uh, yeah, I will, uh, stop recording. Then we'll come back and talk about the children. Excellent.